Hello everybody. Welcome to the day after Christmas. Today I'd like to pose a question for you all. Which do you prefer? Chew or smokes? The truth is neither one of these are chew or smokes. Both of these are totally legal products that any child can buy at any age. So literally a five-year-old could walk into a store and buy these. My son came back the other day with a can of this Jack Link's chew. It's Jack Link's original jerky chew. Now, when I was a kid, this was pretty popular stuff. We would go down and buy not just jerky chew, but of course, big league chew, which I'm sure is still available, which was bubble gum. And they would show these baseball players with, you know, their bubble gum in their cheeks. And you would think, wow, I can be like these guys with their big wads of chew. The truth is, most of us kids back in the 80s, when I was a kid, as well as the 70s, were big fans of baseball and baseball cards. I was never a huge fan of the sport itself, but I liked collecting cards, and I did know the characters. I remember my Jose Canseco's and Cal Ripken Jr.'s. But looking back in retrospect on them selling these perfect chew size canisters of jerky, it does smell pretty good. It reminds me of the childhood I had. My son went out on, uh, hmm, was it Christmas Day, I guess? Yeah, yesterday. They walked down, the corner store was open, and they bought this stuff. He brought it back and showed me. Tried it, said it was disgusting, didn't want the rest. Um, and I explained to him, you know, because he knew, you know, it was a, similar to a chew or a tobacco product. And my wife... A couple of years ago, this must have been several years ago by now, bought me a couple packs of these um, as a novelty online. These are candy cigarettes. And <clears throat> looking back, there were two different brand names they used. One was King's. I want you to think about this for a minute. King's. Of course they would put that on a pack. I mean, you want to be a king? Try these. Well, the other one was even worse. The other pack was called Target. That was their brand name, Target, with a little Target on it. And it's so perfect. It's not even subtle. It's not even nuanced. It's straight up, here, you are our Target audience. Smoke your fake cigarettes. And, of course, back then they had paper around them with, like, a powder inside. So you'd pick, put it up to your mouth and blow it, and it would make a little poof of smoke. And then they sold, of course, novelty fake cigarettes, all that. Look. Fine, sell what you're going to sell. It is a parent's job to teach their kids. The fact is, when these things are so normalized, it makes it very hard for uh, a parent to even begin to co coach their kids on these topics. It's Today, the, the modern version of this is, unfortunately, like kids vaping in class. I was shocked when I watched an interview, or it was a documentary about kids vaping, and what I thought is, well, kids are pretty smart. They know that they're nicotine-based. I found out up to, like, 30 or 40% of kids say they really didn't even know there was nicotine in them. They just thought they were flavored and they were like cigarettes. Kids are dumb. No offense to any young people out there. I was dumb when I was a kid. And I was a pretty smart kid. Okay, I was put in the gifted class. And I was still a fucking dumbass. We were all stupid as kids. So, children who buy these things, they really believe that they're cool. By putting fake cigarettes in. And I thought, when I was a kid, this was still accepted in the 80s. It's been 30 years now, almost 40 years since I was a kid and I saw these. And they're still selling them in the stores. It's interesting. I know there's a lot of ranting and raving about menthol cigarettes, right? It's always been said that, oh, they're marketed to the black community. And now they're saying the same thing. I saw an ad and I screenshotted it because it was so absurd. It said Oregon's trying to ban menthol in the state to save the LGBTQ teen community. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I was like, what does queer youth have to do with fucking menthol cigarettes? Like, no connection at all. But I realized at that point, this is just carrying it on to the next movement and trying to ban things posthumously or, you know, through making up bullshit lies about why it's a danger. Smoking is horrible, whether it's menthol, whether it's regular cigarettes. And look, I smoked for 25 years. When I was a kid, I thought it was cool. Started smoking in school. When I was in high school, a junior, 
I should say, when I was a freshman and I was entering high school, they had a smoking lounge in my school still. Now, technically, you had to be 18 to be in there. And, quote, some of the teachers would patrol, you know, to make sure that there were no young guys in there. But all you did was slip through the crowd. There was like 50 people in there at every break smoking cigarettes. You just bum one off of one of the older kids with the trench coats because in the 80s, everybody was listening to The Cure and Depeche Mode and wearing trench coats. And, and, uh,. <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny time, but the fact that cigarettes were just normalized back then, even that more that recent, and you could smoke on planes. There was a time you could smoke in store grocery stores. I mean, there's still some stores that you can smoke in, and you know it, the thing is, cigarettes were sold as something that doctors recommended even or preferred certain types. It was such a scam, and they've done the same thing through the years with vaping. And uh, with everything else, look, I vape. I smoked for 25 years, I quit smoking, and I've been vaping for seven years now. I still believe it to be safer, my lungs are clearer, I can actually breathe fine. But at the same time, I'm not stupid. Anything you're inhaling is a problem. And so, <clears throat> it kind of bothers me even though that they have these vaping championships or contests where these guys go in and they blow clouds, you know, cloud chasers, I guess they call them. And I think this is pretty pathetic. You know, dudes going out. There are some very talented people who can blow amazing rings and stuff, but the way that this is celebrated, to me, it's almost as dumb as the way that people celebrate celebrity boxing these days. You take all the YouTubers who want to remain relevant and they join these boxing things and literally beat the shit out of each other. We have people who are call themselves creators which requires brain power yet they're willing to get their brains beaten in for a couple of likes and um, we live in a really dumb world and a, a lot of young people buy into the bullshit so I guess my message is here is more than just cigarettes more than just chewing tobacco but rather you know you don't need to smoke or chew to be cool and I, most kids know that these days but instead they've switched to vaping but it's not just that. It's not just the consumables. It's drugs, substances, which fortunately, a lot of kids are pretty smartened on these things now. But they're also out there, you know, spending their money on stupid things like, you know, they want to be like the influencers. They're buying products that other people are recommending to them, even though they're garbage. And uh, that's the world we live in, a commercialized society where people don't want to be themselves. They want to do something to be different and cool whether it be smoking cigarettes when I was a kid, or vaping in recent years, or today swatting someone, or whatever the hell it might be. There, what I've noticed, and this is really important, I guess the main point, is that young people want to be noticed. They want to be seen. This means that they will smoke, they will drink, they will party, they will do whatever they can to feel like they fit in. And it's important to remember that we all went through this shit. To tell the young people, yeah, we've all been through this, but that doesn't really help. It's like, it's so hard to be young. It's so hard to be a fucking teenager. And to go through all the bullshit, the awkwardness. I had a mullet when I was in junior high, and I went on to have grow my hair out, but I was a skater slash heavy metal guy. I had really bad acne. I was usually pretty pale. Just weird, awkward, tall, lanky. I'm six foot two. I grew pretty tall pretty quick, and I never built any muscle. It, it's just, it is what it is, man. But we've all been through our awkward teenage years, and I just, if you start smoking, or you start chewing, or you start consuming certain drugs, you are going to end up taking those on as a normal part of your life. They will become part of your identity to an extent, and if you can grow up as a without those things let's say to be able to actually go out and meet people and take the effort and not just whine because there's a lot of self-loathing these days i've seen this over and over this nihilistic youth you know get over it because you have to because there's no other option life is complicated life is confusing for everyone we all got to help each other out and especially the youth so um I don't know, I can't say much for people in my age group either, but then again, Gen X is pretty badass, I must say, overall. 
we're, we're running this show, so <laughs> best respect. Just kidding. I'll talk to y'all later. Thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you in the new year.